What's up, y'all? Let's jump right into these NBA playoff first round predictions. We got the number one seed in the East, the Indiana Pacers, not playing so well down the stretch, taking on the number eight seed, Atlanta Hawks. Do you actually realize that since January 1st, both of these teams are 12 and 13? Now, that's amazing, especially since the way, you know, the Indiana Pacers started off. But they hit one heck of a stumbling block over the last three, four months of the season. But still, it's hard for me to find any situation where they're not going to win this series. As a matter of fact, I think I don't think a sweep is going to happen because I just don't think that the Pacers are playing well enough as a unit to sweep. And I just really don't believe in Atlanta. So I think Indiana wins it, but I think Indiana wins it in five instead of four or six. So that's my take on that first series. Let's move on to the second series or another series in the Eastern Conference. The defending champions, number two seeded uh, Miami Heat taking on the number seven seed, the Charlotte Bobcats. Now, normally, I don't put all that much stock in what happened in the regular season. I always go back to the old adage or old example. I say, you know, the Chicago Bulls. In the 2010-2011 season, swept the Miami Heat in the regular season, got into the playoffs, lost in five games. So Miami did sweep Charlotte four games to none in the regular season, but that doesn't necessarily mean anything usually. But I think it is indicative of what you can look forward to seeing in this series. There's no way Charlotte handles or even threatens Miami. I don't see it at all. I think LeBron exerts himself and shows himself early on to, you know, uh, kind of take control of this series and uh, enough where he doesn't have to play big minutes and allows the reserves to kind of do their thing the rest of the way. I got Miami in a sweep. The next series, the number three, Toronto Raptors were able to hold off the Chicago Bulls, hold on to that number three seed. They take on number six, Brooklyn Nets. Now, you want to talk about turning things around. Brooklyn. Where Brooklyn at? Well, Brooklyn stood up and showed you where they was at. They went 34 and 17 this year. Uh, and I mentioned 12 and 13 was the record for the Pacers and the Hawks. Actually, that was since March 1st. Brooklyn is the team that since January 1st is 34 and 17. That is a heck of a turnaround from where they were. Now, this is still a very close series, though. I mean, it could kind of go, a lot of people feel it can go either way. You got the Raptors with their youth and athleticism, and then you got all of the experience with Brooklyn. Now, in this particular situation, I got to give the experience the edge. The Raptors just haven't been there, and I just, nobody knows how they're going to react in the playoffs. So I got the Nets winning by, and the Nets winning in six games. Next up is the Bulls. Yes, the Bulls. The this is the number four or five game, uh, four or five series. The Bulls are the fourth seed. The Washington Wizards are five. Washington could give the Bulls a little bit of trouble because of the backcourt. Their backcourt is a uh, younger, more athletic, and the Bulls don't have a swift point guard to check John Wall. So I'm just going to be interested in see what Kirk Heinrich does as he's trying to keep pace with John Wall. All of that said. The Bulls are going to win this game in the paint. They don't have players to match up with Joakim Noah, Taj Gibson. And even, I'm going to tell you, I expect to see a really good series from Carlos Boozer. So I think the Bulls win this series, and I think they're going to probably win it a little bit easier than a lot of people think. I got the Bulls winning in five games. But I had to show you that slam by Tosh Gibson. Yeah, just playing around making footage for these predictions, and I threw down that. So I said, hey, let's show everybody what that's about. Let's move into the Western Conference, though. The number one seed is San Antonio Spurs. All they do is win, 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 no matter what. And they are taking on the number eight seed, Dallas Mavericks. A lot of people feel like Dallas is dangerous for San Antonio. I don't see that, not in the playoffs. I don't really see that. Now, I do think that Monta Ellis, obviously Dirk Nowitzki, those guys are big-time performers. But my issue is Dallas is not a good defensive team. And I find it hard to imagine. I mean, you know, Dallas was ranked 20th in the NBA in opponents uh, points per game this season. 
we all know when San Antonio's on, they are like a well-oiled machine. I don't see any scenario where a poor defensive team gives the San Antonio Spurs any type of problems. And that is why I have San Antonio sweeping Dallas in the first round. Not a lot of people have that, but that's what I got. I got San Antonio in four games. The next series, the number two seed, Oklahoma City Thunder, taking on the number seven seed, the Memphis Grizzlies. In my personal opinion, in this series, the only way I can see Memphis really um, giving Oklahoma City any trouble, they have to be extremely physical on the inside. They really kind of have to bully OKC that, or do their best to bully OKC. And uh, this is especially on the inside because with people like Gasol and Zebo, it's a lot of beef there for Memphis. But I just don't see their defenders on the perimeter having an opportunity to really contain Westbrook and Durant. And I think uh, ulti- ultimately, I think OKC gets out and runs and gets in transition more often. And I think that's going to lead to a fairly easy series win for them. I got OKC in five. Don't have a lot of series being extended deep. Next up, the number three seeded uh, Los Angeles Clippers taking on the number six seed Golden State Warriors. Now, this is an exciting series still, but you see Andrew Bogut's right there. But Andrew Bogut's actually not going to play in this series. And I think that's a huge, huge hit to Golden State. As it already was, the Clippers had an edge on the inside with Griffin and uh, DeAndre Jordan. I think it's only going to get worse with, without Bogan. Now, Jermaine O'Neal is going to try to pitch in, but we all know Jermaine O'Neal is, is, is long in the tooth at this point. And I think not having Bogan really hurts them. I would have picked the Clippers anyway, but because Bogan's not there, I got the Clippers in five. The last series here is the Rockets, uh, the number four seeded Rockets against the number five seeded Portland Trailblazers. In my opinion, this is the closest series of the entire first round. This is very difficult to pick. It's going to come down, which a lot of series will, but it's going to come down to defense, rebounding, and three-point shooting. Neither of these teams play a lot of defense. Neither of them do. Both of them them are subpar defensive teams. But rebounding-wise, they're both top, top, top-tier top rebounding teams. Portland was the number one rebounding team in the league, and both of them shoot tons of three-point shots. The Houston Rockets took the most threes uh, in this, in this, of this, uh, any team in the season, and Portland was right there in the top five. In my opinion, the edge goes to the team that has a little bit more leadership, and that's the Trailblazers, in my opinion. Damian Lillard. Wesley Matthews, LaMarcus Aldridge, I trust them a little bit more than James Harden, Dwight Howard, and company. And I got the Blazers winning a tough series in seven. 